I'm going to start with a quote um, from Albert Einstein that says people use only 10% of the brain. And there are two problems with this quote. First of all, Albert Einstein didn't say it at all. And the second thing, it's not true. We use much more than only 10% of the brain. However, we can use this quote to create another one, which is people use only 10% of flutter. Now, why would I say it? Well, when we first pitch um, Flutter to our business clients or to our CTOs, we say how easy it is, how fast it is, um, that we can create um, cross-platform applications with unique, customized uh, view. And then we can uh, show some real, uh, real examples, like Hamilton App or like Reflectly, which are those very nice, unique applications that show what you can do with Flutter. However, when we start doing our Flutter projects, they really often look like this. And um, this is not like ugly or bad. Those are really nice applications, and they go well with the material design guidelines. Yes, we use those scaffolds, um, list styles, cards, and so on. But I wouldn't call them like beautiful applications, and for sure it's not taking Flutter to its full potential. And I don't like this state. My name is Martin Schauek, and I am Flutter developer since alpha release. And besides doing um, Flutter applications for business clients, I also do design challenges. Design challenges, um, basically what it means is that I find some nice um, designs in, on the internet, on the websites like Dribbble, and I try to implement them in Flutter to make them real apps. And the tricky part about this is that um, designers, when they post such designs, they usually are not meant to be implemented. They are just um, mostly to showcase the designer's skills. However, in Flutter, we actually can make um, those designs real. We can, make, we can put them in um, our applications. And today, I would like to show you how to do it. So we will start with uh, something I created for this presentation, um, what I call the triangle of complex UI. And we'll, we'll have three classes that are the, um, what I believe the core of most um, of complex UIs, of most of those beautiful um, designs. First class is stack. Now, stack is a very simple class. It is used to um, put one thing, one widget, on top of another widget. And to use stack, we just have a stack with children, um, provide an image, for example, to have something like this, yeah, provide a text. And then we can use something, the widget called positioned, which allows us to, well, position our widget wherever we want. And it is very important um, because Positioned widget is very powerful. It allows us to actually put the widget anywhere we want. And this is something you cannot achieve with like rows or columns. Mm, so this is the stack. The second widget will be transform. Transform is a widget that um, helps us change the way another widget is um, painted. So for example, if we have an image uh, like this, we can use transform.translate provide an offset, and then we can move that image. Or we can use transform.scale, provide um, some scale, and it will, for example, shrink. Or we can use transform.rotate, and with the provided angle, we will rotate our image. Those are three basic um, constructors of transform. And there's also the default one, which accepts a matrix. Now, if you don't have any mathematical background, background um, don't worry because matrices in uh, Flutter, in Dart, I should say, are really, really simple, and you don't need like deep knowledge of, of what's actually inside, which I will show you in a second. So this is like the very basic matrix, matrix identity, um, which creates, um, which basically does nothing. This widget will be like wrapping with a container. However, what we can do, we can, for example, um, add translate method, to move our, our widget um, to the right. Or we can use um, rotate method 
to rotate our widget. Now what's, um, what's important is that order of those operations matter. So if we, here we have the image in this position, but if we change the order, it would end up in totally different place. So it's worth remembering that order of those operations matter. Now the other important part um, about widget, about transform, is that um, when it takes place, and it only takes place before painting. So what it means is that if we, if we have some transforming, like rotating some our widget in a column, it may it may end up looking like this, because first Flutter um, calculated um, the the height of this card, and then we just changed the way. Um, it's supposed to paint, so we can have things like this. So this is transform. And the third class is animation controller. And animation controller is used, surprisingly, to control animations. And what it means, it helps us go from one number to another in a smooth way. For example, from zero to one. And we can use that number to um, smoothly transition, rotate, scale, change opacity of our widgets. Um, to do it, um, we, usu we usually um, add single ticker provided state mix into our state class, declare animation controller, initialize it with a duration of our animation. Um, we can call animation controller forward to start running from zero to one. And then in the build method, we'll use animated builder widget, which gets the animation controller, um, gets the child, meaning the widget we want to operate on, and then we will have a builder method. In builder method, we can um, access the animation controller's value. For example, here we will um, use it to and determine the angle of the rotation. And what's important about the builder method is that it will be called every time um, animation controller changes its value. So it will be called very often uh, across the animation, so it will look smoothly. Now, all of this, and when we run animation controller forward, we'll provide such an effect. All right? So those are those three main classes. And honestly, like, I cannot stress it enough how much you can do with only those three classes. So stack, transform, and animation controller. And with these three classes, I believe that you're all ready to start implementing complex UIs. Do you think you're ready? Yeah, yeah, thank you. So, prepare for our first complex design. Uh, well, obviously, it's not very complex. It's our um, uh, Flutter Hello World app. However, I did customize it a little, and I've added a custom drawer. And the drawer looks like this. And we can also have the dragging behavior. So this is our drawer. Now, when we approach design like this, what should we do first? At start, we should um, start identifying static elements. Um, basically, we need to decide what actually matters in this design and what is just a placeholder that can be replaced with any widget. So in our example, we can look at our design as something like this. We just have two widgets. Um, with this animation. And when we have it simplified like this, we can think about what is actually happening um, in this design. And we can notice that blue element is for sure behind the yellow element. We can see that the yellow element is getting smaller. We can see it's moving right. And we can see that the whole transition is smooth. Now when we identify those, those steps, we can just try to implement them one by one. So let's start with the blue element is behind yellow element. Ele behind yellow element. This is very simple. All we need to do is create our widget. We'll call it custom drawer. Um, we'll have two widgets, my drawer and my child. And we'll put them in the stack. This will be enough to have the first part done. Now, um, to have the yellow element uh, get smaller, when you come back to our code, all we need to do is wrap our my child with the transform where we provide scale. And this will make our um, child get smaller. So we got it done. Then to move it to the right, it's again very simple. We just need to add translate. And then it will go to the right. 
And to make the transition smooth, we need to think about animation controller. So we will add a um, single ticker provider state mixing. We'll declare animation controller, initialize it in init state. We'll provide a method um, toggle, which will be just used for, to open or close our controller. And then in the build method, all we need to do is to wrap everything in the animated builder, so it will be called many times. And then we can bind the slide and the scale of our widget with the animation controller's value. So we will start with some um, basic values and we will go to the values we want across, like alongside when the animations goes. Then we will wrap everything in gesture detector so we can just like um, start and um, finish the animation. And everything together should look something like this. Now notice that we haven't used any complex widgets. We just used animation controller, transform, and stack. However, you can say that this is not actually the, the drawer, because drawer is not only tapping, uh, we also need to handle the gesture behavior to, to open it. So what we can do in cases like this, basically we can see how Flutter team implemented their material design drawer. And it is very simple. To our gesture detector, we just add three methods, um, on drag start, on drag update, and on drag end. And then on drag start is just to determine if we can start opening or closing the drawer. On drag update, um, in this method, we'll calculate how big was the gesture a um, user did, and based on it, we can add it to our animation controller's value. And this is a very cool trick, because when the animation controller's value changes, we rebuild our widget, because we used animated builder. So even though we are not using set, set state, we can update our UI. And on drag end is simply deciding if at the end of the dragging behavior we should open or close um, our drawer. And honestly, this is all we needed to do to implement this. I showed you all the code. It was that simple. And what's important, we used mostly those three things, stack, transform, and animation controller. It was enough. However, we can take it to the next level. Um, this is one of the designs I found. Um, it's called 3D Flip Mini by Min Pam. I hope I pronounced it right. And um, yeah, he took a um, different approach to the drawer, and where we can see like this cool effect. And um, we will ignore the guitar, we will just focus on the drawer itself. So what can we do? First, we need to look at like this, because this is actually what's happening, right? We just have this nice animation. When you look at it like this, then we can um, find uh, uh, find those elements, find out what's happening. And what's happening is that we can see that the yellow element is rotating from being si front to being sideways. We can see that the yellow element is moving right. Or should I say right? Um, we can say uh, that the blue element is rotating also from being uh, side to being front. And it's also moving right to being out of the screen to being on the screen. So now let's do it. In um, our transform class, what we can do, this is the code we had previously. We'll just replace methods we had with rotate y, meaning we'll create um, like rotation like, like this. Yep. We'll um, like specify the angle and the animation controller's value. And what will happen is this. Now, this is not what we had in the design. This doesn't even look like a rotation, right? It is, a, it is like this because matrix identity actually um, doesn't take perspective into account. It only works on two dimensions. So to add perspective, all we need to do is add one magic line, which is just specifying 0.001 in a specific cell. And by just adding this line, the whole animation should look like this. And now it looks 3D, like now it looks like rotation. Now to add um, the transition to the right, we'll just wrap it with transform.translate and provide the offset. And it should look like this. 
And this is the whole behavior we wanted for the scaffold. Now for the um, drawer, we'll just use the same transfer method, but with the drawer. We'll change the alignment, um, we'll change the rotate method, and we'll change the offset. So basically, we just change it from, um, like, before it was from um, front to side, now it's from side to front. Now, if those formulas look hard to you, um, what I do is um, I just try to think about what value I want at the start of the animation, what I want at the end of the animation, and then it's much simpler to actually come up with the formula. And it goes much um, easier with practice, so don't be scared by them, you can figure them out. And if you put everything together, we'll have something like this. Notice that from going from the previous one to this one, we only just changed the transfer methods, just few parameters. And we have this nice animation. And if we show something like this, I assume that our users will appreciate it. Right? <laughs> okay? <laughs> Thank you. I'm just kidding. Uh, all right. Um, and what's important, we still use only those three classes, right? It's still simple. There was no hidden widgets, and there was no some secret techniques that only um, appear to you when you have two years of experience. It's really that simple. So let's try to figure out if we can use this triangle um, with some other design. Now the other design is called Airline Servi by Min Pam, and um, this is a lot is happening here. But what we'll focus on is that we have some questions um, that are presented for the like, user of the app, and there are um, three answers at the bottom. User taps the answer, goes to, another, um, the, goes to another question. What we will ignore in this design is the third question, as um, it would be just too complex to have in this talk, and we'll ignore this first animation of the plane going um, to, the, like, to its position. We'll just focus on first two um, questions and the transition between them. So, again, what we'll do? We'll need to figure out what's happening in this design. So, for sure, we can say that the arrows in the left bottom corner um, are static, nothing happens with them. Um, we can say that the plane is static, although I know there's this glow, but this glow can be easily implemented in, uh, in Flare or in Rife, if you're up to date. <laughs> Um, so we can say that the plane is static, and the line below the plane, I'm not sure if you can see it, but there's like a small line below the plane, um, it's also static, nothing happens there. Mm. Also, we can say that there are separate, question, uh, separate pages for each question. What I mean by that is that each question um, is totally separate from a different, from a different one, so we can just um, replace the widget here to present another question. And the text? are fading in from the bottom, as you can see, and they are fading out to the top. And the last thing, um, selected dot animates to the top, to the plane. Yeah, when user taps, the dot goes up. So now let's try to implement it. So we will start with a stack, and in that stack we'll put three widgets, arrow icons, plane, line, and page. Now, arrow icons, very simple, we just have positioned to left bottom corner, and a column with two icons. That's it. Um, plane, we also set position but to top left corner, and we just have an icon with a plane. Um, line is also very simple. Um, we just use position with some width, and a container with a color. So those three are done, and like nothing, nothing exciting there. So let's go to the separate pages for each question. When we look at those questions, we can see that they just have some texts. Text. Um, we can see the number, the question, and the answers. And what we can do, um, like for now let's forget about the animation, let's just focus on what's displayed. Um, so what we can do is we can just create a widget that accepts number, question, and the answers. And um, then in the build method, we'll just have a column um, with step number and step questions, which are just the text with some paddings, and spacer to put everything else on the bottom, and then um, option item 
for each um, for each answer. And the option item is just a row with a dot and the answer. And there was like nothing else exciting here. That's all. Um, so we'll have pages done for now. Now texts are fading in from the top, uh, from the bottom, and out to the top. And for some of you, it may be difficult to actually see what I mean. Is here they're going um, out the top, and they're going in from the bottom. Um, so the behavior looks like this. Yes, and now they're going out to the top. Now what's also important is that each text is animated separately, like with some delay. Um, so yeah, this is the behavior. Now how to do it? We'll create, um, I call it an item fader, all right? Um, with a child, the child will be like any text we want to animate. Then in the, um, the state class, um, what we'll have We'll have a position, which will basically be one if the element is um, below, and minus one when the element is above the, like, the baseline. We'll have animation controller, and we'll have animation. Um, the curved animation is just to make the animation um, look more smooth. And then in the build method, we'll have animated builder with the uh, text you want to animate. And here, in the transform.translate, we will move this text depending on the position and the animation value, either from below its base position to the center, or from the center to the top. And we'll also use opacity so that below the um, base position the text will be invisible, and when it fades out, it also will be invisible. Then we'll have two simple methods, show to um, show the text and hide to hide it. And in the page state, we'll need key for each um, of those texts. So we'll create a list of five keys. And then on init state, for each key, we will show the text with a small delay. Um, this way, the, it, will, like, well, it will just be um, one by one, but not all at once. And then on the top, we'll do the same thing, but with, uh, we'll start to hide those elements. And then with all those texts, we'll just need to wrap them in those item fighters and provide those keys. And that's it. And it should look like this. Now what's important, you have seen all the code to achieve it. All right, so this is done. Now select the dot animate to the top. And this one is pretty tricky because um, our dot was in a row. And now to get this dot out of the row and send it up to the top, it may be very difficult to do. However, what we can do is we can actually put another dot in the same position as the one we selected and hide the selected dot and then move this dot to the top and then make it disappear. This way, user will not notice that this is another widget because we'll put that in the same position. However, it will appear like the dot is going up and it will not totally mess with our code. So this is the dot. We put it in the place of the selected dot and we animate it to the top. And then we get rid of it. OK. So normally, um, when we think of like positioning dot in the um, specific like place and then move it to the top, we should think about stack and positioned. However, um, we can use positioned also with an overlay widget. Now, overlay widget is a widget that allows us to put a widget on top of all, uh, of all your application. So for example, if you have like a um, progress indicator that you want to lock the screen, you can use overlay to just put it in the front and it's very simple. So what we'll do, we'll have animate dot function with the start offset, which is the offset of our um, selected dot. Then we create overlay entry with the builder method. And in the builder method, we'll have our animated builder, which we all know how it works. And then we'll have positioned. Now in this positioned, we have left, which is uh, like a constant value because it moves only vertically. And in the top, 
we basically interpolate between the starting position and the ending position based on the animation controller's value. And that's it. Then, in the, then we need to add this entry to the overlay, start the animation to go from the starting position to the plane, and after that, we just remove it. Mm. Yeah, and if you are, um, if you don't know how to take, um, how you get the start position, because this is something like I just had there, um, all you need to do is add those two, three lines, and then uh, you just get the position of the current widget. If you don't know how to do it still, just Google it. It's upfront. And this is what we got. So we have the dot animating to the top, and it doesn't even, like, user will not notice it, right? We have all this animation. Now, I know that there was a lot of code, and I know it might be a bit um, tiring for you. However, um, what I meant to show you is that you saw all the code to get those designs. I didn't hide anything from you. You all now know how to do them. Um, and to do them, we only use those three things, stack, transform, and animation controller. So, since we all know this, now let's try to um, go to some other designs um, and use what we had previously. So this is um, one other design I found. It's called by ticket by, by DLDP. And what we'll focus on is only this um, bottom uh, sheet that animates to the top with those nice images going there. Mm. So this is the design. This is the effect we want to get. And first thing you might be worried about is, all right, how to get this sheet to be draggable and go to the top and then scrollable and how to manage everything. Um, it looks very complex, and it is very complex, because first time I did this design, I implemented it myself, and it was hard. However, uh, I believe something like eight months ago, um, Flutter team in their Widget of the Week series showed us draggable, scrollable sheet, which basically handles everything about it. So you don't have to worry about this sheet. We got it. What we have to uh, worry, I mean worry, what we, what we have to think about is how to get from this to this, or to be more specific, how to um, get position, those elements, position of those elements, to get in these positions and these sizes. And also, besides figuring out their positions, we need to figure out how to actually smoothly move them from one to the other. Now, um, let's start with the starting position. And what we can do is we can just use the uh, thing we used with the animated dot. We just can get the position from the offset. And it will work. However, very often you can actually calculate um, the position based on the code you written. For example, here, um, you'll probably know that the um, margin here will be um, 16 pixels. And then that the image will be 40 pixels because you specified in the code. And then, for example, you can specify that the four pixels will be between the images. So then for each element, if you just know their index in the list, you can actually calculate its um, position from the left. So we have the starting position. Now when it comes to the uh, well, starting position from the left, and when it comes to the position from the top, you can also just specifying, assuming we are all using stack, because we want to use stack. So we have the starting position. Now when it comes to end position, it works exactly the same. We can just specify it in our code. We, need, we don't need to find it. We just need to read our code. Yes, and then for each element, we'll have, um, we just have the top position. So we have starting position, and we have ending position. Now all we need to do is figure out how to interpolate from one to another. And luckily, um, the draggable, scrollable sheet is very helpful with it because um, we can have scrollable controller, scroll controller in the builder method that this widget gives us. Then in this builder method, we can use animated builder. And it's funny because animated builder actually doesn't require animation. It can get uh, with any listenable. And scroll controller is one of those. 
So basically, um, draggable, scroll, draggable scrollable sheet gives us scroll controller, which we use to, uh, for animated builder. And then in the builder method, we can actually calculate the percentage of the, of the scroll. So what happens now is that we have value from 0 to 1, which is very similar to what we have with the animation controller. We have the builder method, which will be called every time scroll controller changes. So basically, every time any animation happens, like any behavior, drag behavior happens. So we can interpolate between starting position and the ending position, just as we did with the, uh, with the dot, with the flight survey. So, um, yeah, so everything like this will look like this. Well, uh, text, you just need, uh, it's very simple to add this text. You, will, you can find it in the code at the end, but don't worry about it. It's very simple. Yeah, so now, because the variable scroll sheet gives us the percentage of the, of the uh, opening, we can easily interpolate between starting position and the ending position. But, um, okay, it does work. However, we used only stack, and stack doesn't scroll. So if there are more elements, user cannot go, cannot scroll them. And how to handle it is we need to use the same trick as we used uh, with our dot. What, we, what I mean by that is that we need to replace our stack with the list view by the end of the animation. Um, and we can do it in the same place because we specified the position. So what we'll do is we'll wrap the list view with the opacity and we'll just say, show list view only when the animation, only when the sheet is opened, is fully opened. And then we'll have that the elements from the stack, we'll show them, uh, we'll show them only when the sheet is not fully opened. So what it means is that when we scroll, it's all stuck, it's all stuck, and when we, when we reach to the top, we just put list view inside of this. And it will work. Believe me, it will work. <laughs> and it's very easy. It's honestly very easy. You, you know how to do it. You, right now, know how to do it. Um, yeah, so the last design um, is something a bit different because mostly we are focusing on the mobile designs because this is what we use Flutter for mostly. However, you can also um, try to um, like create complex UIs for your um, desktop applications with Flutter or for your web applications with Flutter, if you're brave enough. Um, so this is another design I found. Um, it is called Go to Egypt by Ahraf El Kami. I have no idea if I pronounce it right. And what we'll focus on in this design is the parallax animation at the top. You will see the pyramids and descent that will go um, in a different speed, yeah? And they created this parallax effect. Um, I'll just let you see it one more time. Or not. Yeah. So basically, it's a parallax effect. And we can do it on web. How to do it? Um, we'll start with our list view of the elements we have on the web page. We wrap this list view in a stack because stacks are awesome. And then we add some positioned items. Now, those positioned items will use offset that, was, uh, that is provided from the scroll controller of the list view. So um, when you scroll, the scroll controller will um, provide new offset. We'll call it something like set state. And um, we'll use this offset in those positions. Now, we'll multiply this offset by a different numbers. So when users cross, each position of each of those elements will change, but in the other, but in a different speed. So it will create a parallax effect because we can put one element overlap with another. Now to make it work, we'll need to remember to add an empty container as a first element, so we can actually see what's um, we can actually see this parallax effect, and the effect is this. This is in Flutter. You can see the debug icon. <laughs> yeah? And this is the parallax effect. I showed it on the, uh, on the web, but obviously you can do it on the mobile as well. 
And if you see those other animations, those are the same as we used in the text showing in the airline survey. Yes, because those are just the those are just the transforms that we um, like run uh, on init state. Yeah. So um, if you want to um, actually see if it's possible, um, oh, there's free T, but um, it's deployed on fidev.io slash, slash Egypt, so you can see it. So we had this design. We had all. Uh, we have those three designs, and you all now now know how to implement them. Um, I didn't show you like 100% of the code, but you've seen all the hard part or the difficult stuff. And well, what I want you to know that they're not that hard. If we just look at them, try to think about what's happening, try to break it down point by point, and then just implement them, they all start to get pretty easy. And once we figure out what's, um, what's happening there, we just need to go to our triangle of complex UI with stack, transform, and animation controller, and just implement it. Now, if um, you want some more, uh, you can follow me on um, by my Martin Schalek and Martin underscore Schalek on Twitter. Um, you can email me on um, on the email. If you want to sh see the source code and the examples and the full apps, um, it's fidev.io slash complex UI. It's all there. Um, so feel free to, to go there and see the whole code, the whole working stuff. And right now, um, what I want you to to do to um, like to to have from this talk is basically go nuts. Go to your company, tell your designer that you can now implement everything he wants to do. <laughs> Thank you. Do you have any questions? Whoa. <laughs> right. So what presentation tool are you using? Um, Keynote. Thank you for the talk. Uh, my question is, um, so I've seen in the code that you uh, hard-coded hard most of the values. Mm -hmm. uh, have you tried different devices or responsive UI? For example, if you have uh, these um, uh, images that you show one after another on some screens, they might be yeah. not visible. Yeah, yeah. Um, so in general, uh, when I do those designs, um, I usually like hard-code those values because it just makes things easier, but obviously, as you said, on other devices it may look different. 90% um, of the time, um, you can just bind those values with, for example, um, width or height of the screen. Yes. So if we had those images and I said 16 pixels, 40 pixels, 4, and so on, you can say 5% of the screen, 10% of the screen, and so on. And you can do it. I don't do it more uh, in, those, um, in those examples um, because it just adds more complexity to, to, to them. Um, I believe on my um, website, fidev.io, there are other examples um, of such designs. Some of them um, have a little of like um, binding with the width. Um, so you can do it. It just makes um, like, it just produces more code. Does it answer your question? Yes. Yes? Are you sure? Yes. All right. Um, I think there was, all right. So you'll be next. <laughs> hey. Uh, very good presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, on the um, part that you were showing, uh, the parallel, yeah. well, the rotation effect, is uh, the two containers are always in a stack? The uh, two that are rotating? Because yes, yes, yes. Those are still, like, it's all happening in a stack. Mm -hmm. You mean the containers, the drawer, and the scaffold, yes? Yes. So, yeah, uh, I mean, alongside they're still in the stack, we just wrap the transforms, uh, we just wrap them in transforms, and, yeah, only transforms, I believe, but they still stick in the stack. Um, yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah. And uh, a quick one also on the last one on the screen, it's really neat, neat trick that you do the... Um, animation of, of, of scrolling, and then at the end you hide one and you continue the list. The question is, does the scroll continue or, or 
Uh, you mean in with the Egypt one? Yeah, the last. It's all the sound. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. 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 No. When you have the, the, not the last one, but the previous one that you have yeah. a row, and then you start yes. scrolling, it if, does scroll. if you do yes. a flip, it will continue. All yes, the yes, it was in the, yeah, you, you could miss it. Yes, basically you can do, from the stack you just do one thing, and it will scroll, it will scroll on. Because actually what, what, what was happening there is that you were actually scrolling the list view, you just didn't see it at the start, and when the, um, when we uh, get the sheet to the maximum, then you just started to see it. But it was, all, it was always there. All right? Thank you. Uh, well, I think it works, yeah. OK. Uh, yeah, thank you. And uh, the question is, uh, is it possible to stop animations? And uh, the second one, is it possible to join animations to the system, take care about the velocity? Uh, okay, so the first question is, what, is it possible to stop animations? Yeah, so for yes. example, we started something, yeah, and then uh, is it possible to join two animations between each other uh, to the system cares uh, about the velocity? Yes, uh, well, to, um, to stop animation is very simple, like, I believe there's a method in animation control. One, two, three, all right. Um, to stop it, it's very simple. You can have um, multiple animation controllers. Um, the important part is that then you change single ticker provider state mixing to ticker provider state mixing. And yes, you can, for example, add the listener to uh, one animation controller and, uh, for example, say that after this animation ends, start another one. Does it answer your question? All right. If it doesn't, then... Um, Come to me later and we'll figure it out. Else? There are guys at the end. In the um, example where you have the uh, trackable bottom sheet, yep. um, when you switch the, two, uh, uh, the uh, stack for the list view, uh, you use an opac opacity for this. Yes. Um, why? You could just, have, uh, just replace them. Does it have uh, to just replace? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I couldn't just replace them because draggable scrollable sheet needs a scrollable to actually work. So basically, if I didn't have a list view there, um, that was uh, this is similar to the question about the, the scrolling behavior. I need a list view there to open the sheet. So the list view must be there. It's just not visible. Uh, All right. Okay. Understood. Right? All right, so thank you very much. If you have any more questions, oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, hi, um, hi. great talk, by the way. Um, so I was able to follow along, but until the, the set entry, point zero zero one, that didn't make yeah. any sense to me, or I, I okay. don't, yeah. don't understand it, so uh, if you can well, shortly Well, I would that. be so glad to explain you the details. However, I don't know them. Um, <laughs> well, I will just tell you what I know and what I read in the article from I, what I have it. Basically, if you put uh, this 3, 2, 0, 0, 0, 1, 3 is the row, 2 is the column, or the opposite, but it's just the um, position of this cell. And if in this cell you put this very small number, it can be different number, but, but in 0, 0, 1, it just provided this exact effect. It just provides a perspective. I d okay. Since it's recorded, I will stop here, because probably I will say it wrong. Um, yeah, for me, it's just a magic line that um, makes the 3D animations work. <laughs> Sorry about that. But you can read about it and, and figure it out. Yeah. OK, thank you very much.